Hello, this training is titled Cultural Destruction, Total War Declared on God, Total War Declared on You. Well, let's get to the bottom line right at the beginning. The bottom line is we are in the middle of a cultural revolution whose end game is the destruction of the United States. The battle space is not one with physical weapons, but it is in the realm of ideas and narratives. It's cultural. It's moral. At its core, it's spiritual and deals with the souls of men. The ultimate target is you. The goal is to recruit, particularly the young, and also to demoralize, destroy, or force to submit the citizens of the United States. The outcome is to destroy history, destroy culture, destroy institutions, destroy your sense of reality, destroy your sense of safety, destroy your sense of justice, destroy your sense of national purpose, destroy your personhood that you're created in the image of God. All of this is to demoralize the population to destroy you. Marxism seeks to destroy a history of a people to destroy a people. Marx said, take away the heritage of a people and they are easily destroyed. Use education for indoctrination was Lenin's position. Give me four years to teach the children and the seed I have sown will never be uprooted. Education is a weapon in Stalin's mind. Education is a weapon whose effect depends on who holds it in his hands and at whom it is aimed. He went on to say this, America is like a healthy body and its resistance is threefold. It's patriotism, it's morality, and it's spiritual life. If we can undermine these three areas, America will collapse from within. Khrushchev was known to say this, You Americans are so gullible, you won't accept communism outright, but we'll keep feeding you small doses. You want to talk about old dead white guys whose ideas are bankrupt, whose ideas don't work, bring division and hatred, have brought economic misery and poverty around the world, have killed hundreds of millions of people, and are still bringing misery and killing people today, even from their graves. These are the leaders that still follow these old dead white guys today. The same results, the ideas don't work, they bring division and hatred, they bring economic misery and poverty to the U.S., they will demoralize and kill hundreds of thousands, and it will destroy the United States as founded if we continue on this trajectory. These ideas are like a foreign virus to the founding fathers and the founding ideas of the United States. Our unequivocal, irrefutable, immutable, fundamental rights are given by God. They have their inspiration from the Judeo-Christian heritage and from the Book of Life, the Bible. The Declaration's ideas and the Constitution and the Bill of Rights spring forth from this biblical thinking, and a set of rights is forged into our very being. These rights include unequivocal rights given by God of life, liberty, that is religious and civil, pursuit of happiness, religious beliefs, religious practice, the rights given by God for free speech, for freedom of the press and assembly to say the things that we want to our government and as a group, to self and family defense, to steward our property, to economic self-determination, to equal justice under the law, to speedy justice, and a voice in passing laws and electing leaders. These are some of the forged rights that God has given us as a personhood, as a part of our being. Knowing that God has forged this into our personhood, government's only role, only, 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 only role is to protect those rights and to restrain any wickedness that would violate those rights. But what is the free speech landscape today? The free speech landscape is horrifying. A Texas law was passed to restrict viewpoint censorship by big tech platforms but the Supreme Court of the United States overturned that law. The Disinformation Governance Board was created, and it was like the Ministry of Truth from 1984. Biden's speech czar said this, Most of the disinformation that we've seen is coming from the right. In actuality, it's coming from her. She worried that Trump supporters would show up armed at the polls. She was spreading disinformation. She denied the legitimacy of the Hunter Biden laptop story, claiming it was Russian disinformation. She said that she wants to use government power to silence criticism of female politicians like Kamala Harris, Ihan Omar, and AOC. She called it a matter of national security. Well, this was fortunately stopped, but it was like a whack-a-mole. 
You stop it in one place and it pops up in the next. And so Ministry of Truth 2.0 popped up, which has Kamala Harris launching a disinformation task force that addresses online harassment and abuse. It is a full-on attack on free speech. What's really going on? What's really going on is the 70-year project of the infiltration and taking over of American institutions and culture. Antonio Gramsci, a communist in the beginning of the last century, said that infecting American institutions with Marxism was the way to go. Take over the institutions of the state, he said, that is law, political parties, the civil service, councils, police, military, etc., and even the institutions which are not ordinarily deemed to be directly part of the state public schools, universities, newspapers, charities, churches, etc. He advocated for a long march through the institutions. So concerning was this in the 1960s that on January 10, 1963, U.S. Rep. Sid Herlong from Florida read the list of the 45 communist goals for America into the congressional record so there would be a permanent record of it. The express purpose was to create a permanent record of this subterfuge. Notably, Rep. Herlong was from the Democrat Party. The book at the time, The Naked Communist, had identified these areas of infiltration, and here is a subset of those. Promote promiscuity and easy divorce. Discredit the family as an institution. Eliminate prayer from school. Get control of schools through teachers' unions. Use school curricula to promote socialism. Eliminate obscenity laws. Call it free speech. Break down cultural standards of morality by promoting pornography. Promote homosexuality, degeneracy, and promiscuity as normal, natural, and healthy. Infiltrate the media. Get control of key positions in radio, TV, and motion pictures. Infiltrate the church and replace revealed religion with social religion. Discredit the Bible. These are just 11 of the 45 goals that were read into the congressional record. And as a result, over the last 60, 70 years, many institutions have been captured. Universities, teachers' colleges, law schools, seminaries, public schools, museums, libraries, the federal deep state, government agencies at all levels, political parties, hospital systems, mainstream media, social media, Hollywood, movie and TV, the music industry, sports industry, Fortune 500 companies, nonprofit foundations, mainstream churches, the Vatican, and U.S. military leadership. All of these now are promoting neo-Marxist ideas. The free institutions that seem to remain are these, small businesses, small towns, counties, precincts, Christian colleges and Christian schools, home schools, a remnant of historians, a remnant of citizens, a remnant of political leaders that are willing to fight, and remnant churches that know that they're called by God to speak into the civil space, and intact family units. These are the free institutions that we can have a counteroffensive from. Well, in order to fight for our God-given rights, we need to know what we're up against, and we need to understand the cultural destruction engine. Well, these are the old dead white guys I've referred to already, but there's one other, Frederick Hegel. Frederick Hegel is another old dead white guy who thought that the state has the supreme right against the individual, whose supreme duty is to be a member of the state. For the right of the world spirit, the state is above all special privileges. He also went on to say this, The state is a supreme manifestation of the activity of God in the world. It stands above all. The reality of the kingdom of heaven is the state. The state is God's will. The state is God bestriding the earth. And Napoleon was his example of what that looked like. Hegel also did work in the area of study called dialectics. The benign definition is this. It's a process of placing opposing ideas against each other to see if an evolved view can be developed out of the process. In Hegel's case, the actual result is the negation, that is, the destruction of truth. Scholars took Hegel's work and applied new language to the process. The process negates truth by stating a thesis, that is, a truth, developing a contradictory antithesis, a false narrative, combining them into a synthesis which is watered-down truth, which in effect negates truth. Marx took this concept and created the dialectic destruction engine. It's like the world engine in the movie Man of Steel. 
In this movie, General Zod, along with his minions, seek to destroy the foundations of Earth. Much like the aggressive attempt to replace the Judeo-Christian underpinnings of our nation's history and governing philosophy with humanism. It's like the world engine used to reverse the polarity of the Earth. There is no common ground. It destroys everything. The tool, the dialectic destruction engine, the fuel is the false narrative fed into it, and the target is the destruction of the culture, the population, and ultimately you. Let's take a look at how it works. First, there's the thesis, to target a truth to be destroyed. Then there's the antithesis or antithesis, that is to create a hardcore false narrative. And then there's the synthesis, with dogmatic effort force the thesis to compromise with the antithesis and form a new pseudo-narrative. So it's doing this process over and over again. Repeat as needed until you have cultural rubble, the host culture, destroyed. So here's the thesis, the truth, that the U.S. is actually a great country. But the antithesis that's being spread and promulgated today is that the U.S. is a horrible country. And the idea is to get the compromise for the American people to say, okay, uh, the U.S. is very average and very flawed. That is the attempt to move the general population to come to that conclusion. But this is just a part of the process. Because once you get the population to agree to that point, you begin the dialectic destruction process a second time. If you can get the American population to agree that the U.S. is very average and flawed, then you produce a new antithesis, which is the U.S. was flawed from the beginning. And you try and get the synthesis to be that the U.S. was founded on a false principles. And then in the next round, you begin with the U.S. founded on false principles. You produce an antithesis that socialism is a superior system, and you get the American population to agree that a new socialism based on science and experts is best. And you move the population from believing in their country to having a total disregard for the principles and its greatness. This cycle can be repeated until the desired outcome of rubble is produced. The original hardcore false narrative can be nuanced or can be radical. How aggressive this first false narrative can be is determined by how much support the false narrative will get from the mainstream media and all captured institutions. Once the first forced compromise is achieved, the momentum of the dialectic destruction engine can continue powerfully forward, reducing a culture to rubble. Therefore, the key is to intensely battle the first false narrative with fact. The first false narrative needs to be aggressively refuted, no matter what you're called or what the threats are that are made. The Bible says, For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but of divine power to destroy strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. The New York Times was very explicit about the 1619 Project. It literally described it as a narrative. To change the story of America's founding is based on slavery and changing the founding date from 1776 to 1619. This is the dialectic destruction engine being fed a false narrative by the New York Times. The false narratives would include these. America is systematically racist. America was founded on white supremacy. Hate crimes are everywhere. George Floyd was a hate crime murderer. The CDC is a non-political, highly trusted government agency. The FBI, CIA, and IRS are highly trustworthy agencies. The 2020 election was completely legit. Voter ID and integrity laws are racist. Men can be women and women can be men. Planned Parenthood is an outstanding American organization. Man-made climate change is 100% proven. COVID-19 came from a wet market. COVID-19 shots are completely safe. Masks protect you from COVID-19. These are all false narratives that we've seen fed into the dialectic destruction engine. What about fighting tyranny? Tyranny's been around as long as mankind has walked the earth. But the Reverend Jonathan Mayhew in 1750 called out tyranny for what it is. And this is what he said. Civil tyranny is usually small in its beginning like a drop in the bucket. 
till at length, like a mighty torrent or the raging waves of the sea, it bears down on all before it and deluges whole countries and empires. Tyranny brings ignorance and brutality along with it. It degrades men from their just rank into the class of brutes. It damps their spirits. It suppresses arts. It extinguishes every spark of noble ardor and generosity in the breast of all those who are enslaved by it. It makes naturally strong and great minds feeble and little, and triumphs over the ruins of virtue and humanity. This is true of tyranny in every shape. There can be nothing great and good where its influence reaches, for which reason it is required that every friend of truth and humankind, every lover of God and the Christian religion, to bear a part in opposing this hateful monster. He preached this message 16 years before the Declaration of Independence was signed. You are the modern warrior. How do we fight in this battle space? First of all, we never let the false narrative take hold. We speak up. We question it. We undermine it. We play it out to its illogic extreme. We stand for truth. We do it with a team of others. We daily grow in our faith. We become anchored in the truth. And we question everything that we see in the mainstream media and find alternative sources of news. And we read and study history and question conventional wisdom. We free our mind from assumptions and past ways of thinking, and we learn to not walk with the crowd. And lastly, we pray for the wicked, because a converted wicked person becomes a great ally. We also, though, pray that the wicked would be thwarted or destroyed if their hearts are beyond conversion, so that the godly might live quiet and peaceful lives, according to 1 Timothy 2. We also get involved in precinct organization. We gather with other like-minded people. We support those going into the civic space, and we inform and mobilize voters. We stay aware of what's going on in our local government, which is where ultimately the best government takes place. Well, we are in a David and Goliath moment. We need to stand up to the Goliath of political correctness, woke aggressivism, and all the things that are taking away our God-given rights and our freedom. You see, freedom must be fought for, protected, and passed on. Ronald Reagan said freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day, we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. This has been a joint production of Serve God, Defend Liberty and Christian Civics Training. Thanks for listening.